there are just a few circuits, telephone poles with brackets like these will do the job. However, where communications traffic is heavy, you use cross arms which multiply the carrying power of the same type of poles many times. Standard signal core cross arms are usually put together in a pole yard before being taken out in the field. Notice that the top is slightly arched so it can shed snow or rain. Wooden pins for insulators are eight inches long and there are 10 on a cross arm. To avoid damaging these pins when you drive them in, use a wooden mallet. Then fix each one in place with a nail. They're all threaded so the glass insulators, which will go on later, can be screwed on. Each cross arm is also equipped with a 30 inch steel brace. The hole you see bored through the cross arm is for the carriage bolt, which holds one end of the brace. The brace itself has a hole at each end. The smaller one fits the bolt. The other one fits a drive screw, which we'll see later. When putting on the brace, tighten the nut enough to hold the brace up out of the way. This will make the cross arm easier to carry. Most commercial lines use two braces, but the Army uses just one to save metal. It's a lot easier, of course, to install the cross arm while the pole is still on the ground. The through bolt for the washer goes on first. Another washer goes against the cross arm. The length of the bolt you use depends on the width of the pole. The idea is to pick a bolt that extends about half an inch out beyond the nut. Now, before you tighten this bolt all the way, get the cross arm square with the pole. A cord like this, from the center of the cross arm down to the base of the pole, acts as a guide. Next, take a steel square and move the cross arm until it's set exactly at right angles to the cord. Then, as soon as you've got the cross arm squared with the pole, place the other end of the steel brace so that the hole is over the center of the pole. This is called a lag screw. Actually, it is a drive screw pounded in most of the way like an ordinary nail, but threaded so it holds fast when you finally tighten it with a wrench. After you've got the brace as you want it, you then tighten the cross arm bolt all the way and we're ready to set the pole up in position. Sometimes, however, it may be necessary to install the cross arm after the pole is up. When this is the case, you'll have to use a hand line to get the arm up to the top of the pole. 
First, put a loop over the two center pins, the way this soldier is doing it, and then make a half hitch between the last two pins. If you tie it this way, you'll be able to hold the cross arm quite securely. But you'll also be able to remove the line easily when you want to. Now, as soon as you get up to the top and get your safety belt fastened, and before you start drawing up the cross arm, put the through bolt and washer in place. After you've hauled it up, grab the cross arm by the pins and rest it on your safety belt so that you can get into a good, easy working position. Then while you're placing the cross arm on the bolt, hold the bolt from behind so it isn't pushed out. Next, put on the washer and the nut before doing anything else. Then there's no danger of the cross arm falling off. Now, just as before, you're ready to square the cross arm with a pole. To do this, get some other crew member to line it up for you by eye, or use the string and steel square method we've already seen. Then fasten the loose end of the steel brace to the pole. When you put two or more cross arms on one pole, use the regular braces just as you would if there were only a single cross arm. These cross arms are usually spaced 24 inches from the top of one to the top of the next. However, sometimes they may be spaced only 18 inches from top to top. When this happens, you've got to move the top brace up. This means drilling a new hole through the cross arm four inches out beyond the regular hole. Or, you may have to cut the space between the cross arms to just 12 inches. In this case, use the standard braces in the standard holes. To just run them from the back of the cross arms to the face of the pole, like this. At certain specified poles, the cross arms will carry these transposition brackets. They are used to switch the positions of the wires of a circuit. Without going into the theory of how it works, the reason for doing this is that it reduces interference in the circuit. You fasten the transposition bracket to the cross arm with a carriage bolt and a coach screw. The things to remember when installing a standard cross arm are simple. Put the through bolt through the pole first. Fasten the bolt with one washer against the pole, and one against the arm. Keep the arm at right angles to the pole, and make sure the brace is well secured.